What's up guys? Kyle here with Dark Iron Diesel. Today, me and Mr. Bronx are gonna show you how to install a RevTech positive air shutoff on your 6.7 power stroke. So in case you're wondering what a positive air shutoff is, basically it's a valve that restricts air from going into your engine and without air the engine can't run so the engine shuts down. And this is used in uh, like oil field applications because to prevent an engine runaway. Uh, if there's a gas leak uh, on, in an oil field like a, a well or a lease site, something like that, uh, your, your truck can actually start sucking in that gas and it burns that instead of your diesel fuel and your engine will just start revving higher and higher and higher and it'll you know eventually blow up catch on fire whatever it does so to get legally allowed on a well site you have to have a positive air shut off in case that happens you can click a button and it will shut off all the air to your engine and then your truck will shut down The neat thing about new diesel trucks is they already have a valve built in uh, right here. This is a 6.7 power stroke and there's a valve that's already in the air system and I don't know, it's kind of like a throttle valve, I don't really know what they're called on a diesel, but uh, this kit is actually just going to piggyback into this and you don't actually have to install a big new positive air shutoff valve like you do on some of the old ones. So this is a super clean kit, it works great and you use the factory uh, throttle valve right here. So again, this is a RevTech 311 part number. Uh, it's for, it says 11 to 17 power stroke, but it works on pretty much all six, seven power strokes. Like I just installed one on a 2019 the other day and it worked. So this kit is super easy to install as far as positive air shafts go. You have your module, it's gonna go under the hood. You got positive and negative. This plugs into your module. Uh, this is going to plug in in the cab to your uh, shutdown button. This plugs into your factory throttle valve and then it piggybacks into here. If your truck is deleted, then you're not going to have it plugged in anyways, so you just wouldn't plug this part in. And then uh, this piggybacks into your crankshaft sensor uh, th that is in between your transmission and your engine. There's kind of a plate there and that's where it goes. So not only will you be able to just press this button and the truck will shut down, it actually comes preset to shut down if your truck hits uh, 3200 or 3250 RPM. Uh, that's a little low for this truck. This truck redlines at 4000. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this uh, shutdown RPM to the max setting, which is 4500 RPM. So basically if the truck ever reaches 4500 RPM, this module is gonna kick in and it's just gonna shut that valve off uh, without you even having to press the button. So to set this to shut down automatically at 4,500 RPMs, you're just gonna use a socket, Allen key socket back here and take this cover off. Once you have the screws off, just take this cover off and be very careful with uh, this circuit board in here. So basically here are your switches. And if we want to have it shut down at 4,500 RPM, we're gonna have switch one off and then two, three, four, five, and six on. So there's a little yellow uh, kind of film on, or a, like a plastic wrapper. We're gonna peel that off and then we can move the switches. Peel that off. All right, so I don't know if the camera's gonna pick this up, but up here it says on, so we need to move them up high. Uh, so switch one we're gonna leave at uh, off, and then we're just gonna grab a little pick and just gently move these guys up. There, so one is still down, and then two, three, four, five, and six are all up in the on position. So this truck will automatically shut down at 4,500 RPMs. Once you move the switches, you can put your cover back on, and we'll start installing this thing. So first, figure out where you're gonna mount this module. I like to just kind of keep it here behind the coolant reservoir. I just run a few zip ties behind it underneath the, on, and attach it onto these hoses. So once you know where your harness is gonna go, we can start plugging it in. So I'm gonna put this end in first. This is the one that goes into your cab to mount your switch. And I kind of think it's the biggest pain in the ass of the whole job. But if you look down there, there's a rubber 
grommet and I'm just gonna use a razor blade and I'm gonna kind of cut a hole in it on this side and I'm gonna go in the cab and do the same thing and then I'm gonna use a piece of metal uh, like a coat hanger and I'm just gonna push it through tape it up and pull it into the cab there's what it looks like from inside the cab so you're just gonna have to figure out a way to kind of cut some of that rubber uh, big enough to get that uh, connector through okay so I got a unwinded coat hanger here uh, pushed through the hole I cut and I have it taped up to that blue sensor and I'm just gonna pull it through Okay, this wire's in here. I'm just gonna pull the slack into the cab and we'll tie it up under the dash when we're done. Okay, so I plugged this in. All I did is you just put, plug it in and then push this purple tab in and it'll kind of suck it in. And I'm just gonna set it roughly where it's gonna sit in the truck and then we can continue to run the wiring harnesses. Okay, so it's just sitting here. We got the one going into the cab already. This one is right here at the battery, which is where it's gonna have to go anyways. Then we have our two uh, other lines here. So we're gonna start with this guy, which is gonna go to that throttle valve. So I got my throttle valve wiring just kind of ran over the engine. This is where the plug is. See, it's kind of underneath, right down there. There's a red tab. Yours might look orange, depends on what year of your power stroke, but we're gonna have to pop this tab off first. And then I usually just get a flathead screwdriver and I wedge it like that to push the tab and I get another screwdriver in here after just like that and I kind of twist it just like that a little bit and it'll push that sensor off so we got to unplug that sensor this is a better way of showing it there's this tab here it's gonna be pushed in on that sensor down there you want to push that tab out then you can push it there and pry it off okay it's unplugged and I kind of fed it underneath there and popped it up right here just to make it easy uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug in this guy to it and then once this is plugged in we're gonna run it back underneath there and we're gonna plug this end back into the factory throttle valve I find that this one's a little bit tight sometimes uh, sometimes it works to just put a little bit of like lube or Vaseline on here and then uh, it'll slide in and click better okay the new plug is plugged in it's piggybacked into the original plug underneath there Make sure to throw a zip tie under there somewhere just so it doesn't want to go forward to the fan. And then I just kind of run it over here and do another zip tie there and we'll deal with this slack at the end. Now we're going to run the crankshaft position sensor harness down and I'm just going to put it, feed it down there and try to hug it, put it underneath the lines, just kind of keep it as far away this way as you can so it's not getting there, your, your steering shaft is in there, you don't want to close to that. So we're just going to put it down there and then we'll go underneath the truck and hook it up. All right. Okay, so I'm on the driver's side of the truck. Here's your transmission bell housing, and there's your engine, and right here, there's this plate in between. And that's where your crank sensor is located. This is super fun to do. Uh, you're gonna have a blast. So first thing, uh, up here, there's that rubber grommet there. You're just gonna use both of your hands. You're just gonna pull that grommet off. Okay, grommet's off. Now what you're gonna wanna do is just kinda grab a mirror and you'll be able to look up in there and kind of see what you have to do. So this is the new one, but this is what the factory plug is gonna look like pretty much, except for it doesn't have this red lock-in tab. And a pro tip for you, when you do connect this one up to your cam or your crank sensor, do not push this locking tab forward. And you'll thank me if you ever have to change your cam sensor down the road. Just leave it, just push it until it clicks and leave it. Don't slide this red thing forward. But anyways, if you get up there with two hands up in the hole where it actually is and one hand you can tug on this wire a little bit and the other hand just try to you kind of got to get your you kind of got to push your finger like upside down kind of like push it that so it's a little awkward but you can press this tab and pull pull this connector off it's not going to be easy it's probably going to take you a little bit but uh, you'll get it trust me okay i got it unplugged there it is so see you're just gonna have to get a finger in there press that tab with one hand and then pull the wire with the other hand it's not fun uh it's not fun hooking the new one up but yeah anyways 
grab your new wire here, your new sensor here, this guy, and uh, just plug it back into your cam sensor or your crank sh shaft sensor in there. Okay, I got the new wire plugged in and then I got the factory uh, sensor wire here piggybacked in. Uh, now I'm just gonna grab this guy and slide over the wires and pop her back in. It's really not fun doing this and you're basically doing it all just by feel because you cannot see anything up in there. But uh, just have some patience and I'm sure you'll get it. Okay, and there's what it's gonna look like when you're all done. I just zip tied those together and then I ran a couple of zip ties going up there. We'll go up to the top of the truck and we'll finish tying everything up. Okay, I got the module, a couple big zip ties here, so it's secure. Uh, we'll just leave this stuff for right now. We're gonna go in the cab and we're gonna hook up the manual switch and then uh, we'll just hook up this, uh, the battery and we'll be done. Okay, so here's the manual switch. Uh, you could put it up here. There's lots of room for it. The only thing is this uh, red part flashes red when the vehicle is running, so it might get a little annoying. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drill a hole right here and I'm gonna put it in there. You can just grab this and pop it down just to make sure that there's nothing behind where you're drilling just so it has room for the back and your connector there. And uh, I'm just using a drill and this is a 5 8 bit. That's what I'm using to put her on. So you can mount this uh, switch wherever you want but uh, I'm just gonna put it right here. Here's what it looks like behind here. So there's lots of room for a switch to go here. You can see these other ones here. Uh, they don't hit nothing and this is all open space, so it'll be a nice spot. Okay, I got it pushed in there, spun my little nut on there, and just grab a three-quarter uh, socket and snug it up a little bit. Don't over tighten it, but just give it a good snug. Once it's tight, you can plug it in and uh, just kind of pull this wire back, make sure it's all good, and uh, put it all back together. Then go underneath and just use a zip tie and tie up this extra line somewhere out of the way where it's not close to any moving parts or anything. Now we're gonna hook up the battery, uh, this negative. I'm just gonna find a nut that fix, fits on this uh, post here. And then the positive doesn't have a post, so I'm just gonna unscrew this, take the nut right off and, and put, it on, put it on there. Okay, I got my positive and my negative hooked up. I used some washers there because they had pretty big eyelets on the factory harness. Uh, so we can kind of put this cover back over there as best as it will go. And then uh, I zip tied up this harness so it looks kind of neat, as neat as it's gonna. And there it is. So this is all done. We're gonna just clean up my tools and we'll go try her out. All right, let's try it out. Start the truck. See the button. It's flashing like that. So I'm gonna press the button and I'll just keep it on the RPM so you can see what happens. Okay, press the button now. There, just killed the truck, restricted the air, and uh, that kills the engine to prevent a runaway. Then you wait 10 seconds, fire it up, and it's back to normal. One thing I did notice though, is if you do this a couple times, you might get an engine light there that says, uh, like your throttle valve high voltage or something like that, just because this thing is tricking it into closing. So if you do it enough times, you're gonna get an engine light and you're just gonna have to get it cleared. So truck's all done. It's got the manual positive air shut off as well as this, if it hits 4,500 RPMs, it's gonna kick in on its own and shut down the engine. Well, that's it for my video on installing a RevTech positive air shut off on a 6.7 Power Stroke. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Uh, if you got questions, ask in the comments or look me up on Instagram at Dark Iron Diesel and shoot me a message. Thanks guys, we'll see you on the next video.